salvation. Say, Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come humbly and respectfully before your holy, precious written word. And we thank you that revelation knowledge has gifted us. I pray that everybody in this service and around the world connected to this service, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. I decree that veils full of clarity comes. I declare that as the word of God is open to us, our understanding opens up to receive the light that flows from the teaching of God's word. And bodies and yokes are destroyed. I decree that you are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Glory to God. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, 
And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Are we excited to fellowship in the word? Can we celebrate our fellowship in the word? Amen. Glory! Amen. amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self. We want to welcome everybody, all of our social media community, brothers and sisters online. We're so glad to welcome you to the service today, guys. It's going to be an exciting adventure as we unravel the riches of redemption. I'd like you to call a friend, share the video, tag some people. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you engage in the course of the service. And I also want to welcome the radio audience in Akwaibom State, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. We're so glad to welcome you to the service. We're glad to have you as a part of our church family. I'd like you to call a friend, a family member, a loved one. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. I also want to welcome all of you that are connected in the campuses, Power City campuses all over the world. What a joy to have all of you on a day like today, feasting and celebrating the word of his grace. We're really glad to have everybody connected. And we're going to have a great time as we begin to explore the riches of redemption. The Bible remains the authoritative platform for Christian teaching, beliefs, practice, devotion, correction, and instruction. The Bible remains the authoritative platform for Christian teaching, beliefs, practice, devotion, correction, and instruction. Brother Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The previous verse says, he says that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So all scriptures are God breath, the word inspiration. It means God breathed on certain individuals to document the events put together as scriptures. So which means therefore that the scriptures remain the platform for Christianity. We don't resort to a philosopher's material. We don't resort to one quote from one person or the other. We do not look at or consult extra biblical materials, you know, to form a basis of our faith. So which means that the Bible remains what we have, and the Bible has been preserved over the ages. It was written firstly by Moses, the judges, then the prophets, then David, to the writers of the four gospels the book of acts acts of the apostles and the epistles and then the book of revelation such a compendium of insight a compendium of revelation revealing the mind of god to us the bible reveals to us the plan of god the intent of god the purpose of god to us in christ god is not a mysterious being God is not afar, somewhere locked up beyond the skies, somewhere locked up in the clouds. God is not in that place where nobody can approach. To us, God is revealed through the Holy Scriptures. God is revealed to us. That is why we must be careful and attentive, at the same time, dutiful with the Bible. In fact, you cannot live the Christian life beyond how much you appreciate and extol the truth contained in the Holy Wreath or in the Holy Scriptures. I say oftentimes the Bible remains the only inspired material, the only, O-N-L-Y, the only inspired material. So every other inspired preaching, every other inspired teaching, every other inspired book, must be at the inspiration of the Bible. And it's to that degree that we can call the book inspired. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Brother Paul instructs Timothy, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word rightly dividing the word of truth is the word ototomio in the Greek. You will find the meaning of ototomio in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, 
and he shall direct your path. That word direct your path means to straighten something, to make straight. That is where we get the word rightly dividing. When you are saying divide, it means you cut things into two so you make a straight path. That means that in Bible study or in Bible teaching, the work of the teacher of God's word is to create a path that arrives at the truth. To cut through a path that arrives at the truth. That is the intent of that statement. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what we divide is to arrive at the word of truth. So therefore, the rightly dividing is to make a part. And what is that part? That part is the word of truth. The intent of teaching and preaching, it's one thing. It's not to quote scriptures. It's not to display knowledge. It's not to wow an audience. The intent is to show forth the word of truth. The intent is to bring into the purview of your listener the word of truth, which is the subject matter of all Bible reading and all Bible interpretation. The word of truth. In Luke chapter 24, we find Jesus doing his first Bible study. He met some folks on the way to Emmaus who were discussing the event of the past three days. And they said, well, you know, Jesus, the guy, the prophet, was killed the other day. We thought he was the one that was going to restore the political relevance to Israel. We thought he was the one that was going to free us from the tyranny of Herod and all the kings. And to make matters worse, he not only died. When the women went to check his tomb, they said he was not there, but they met some mysterious beings who told them that um, he is risen, he's no longer there. And then Jesus looked at them and said to them in Luke 24, 25, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ, so if you have read the prophets, if you have read Moses, in your reading of the prophets and Moses, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory ought not Christ so there are two things there number one ought not Christ to have suffered these things number two and to enter into his glory so everything the prophet spoke about was what the Christ ought to suffer and the glory that you will enter into as a result of what he did in verse 27, he says, and beginning at Moses. When you hear beginning at Moses, talking about Genesis, but more precisely, Exodus. And all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He expound. The word expound means he revealed to them. That expounding there is to rightly divide. To rightly divide. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things, the things. I'd like you to take note of the word, the things. All right? The things there is a word in Greek, which means, you know, to reveal several instances. That is, it's a compound word that groups things that can refer to a person, refer to a thing, refers to an object that can refer to an event. Okay? It's a compound word. The things. And it groups things that can refer to an object, event, statement, that can refer to an activity concerning himself. So in Torah Bible study, we will look from Moses down to Malachi. Things. We will look at things, we will look at events, we will look at statements that were made, we will look at objects. Objects that could refer to animals, plants, concerning Jesus. So rightly dividing the word of truth is amongst all these things. And the whole intent is to expound Christ. The whole intent is to expound Christ. In fact, look at that Luke chapter 24 verse 44 to 46. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, 
which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Next verse. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Now look at the next verse. And he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Can you imagine yourself sitting down in the church at Antioch or in the church at Ephesus back in the day? And all you had available to you to study was Genesis to Malachi. There were no epistles. There was no four gospels. Genesis to Malachi. Because you cannot rightly divide the epistles. The epistles are the end point of revelation. The epistles are the end point of revelation or the epistles have been rightly divided. It has been rightly divided. So what they were going to focus on will have been Genesis to Malachi. But if you look at John chapter 5 verse 39, Jesus further establishes that he is the focus of the scriptures. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. The scriptures testifies of the person of the Christ. In John chapter 1 verse 45, Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, it's so important to note that the entire scriptures are tailored towards a destination. And that destination is the revelation of Jesus Christ. So we are unveiling Christ from the book of Psalms. Look at Psalm 103 verse 11 to 13. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. Next verse. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Next verse. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. Next verse. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. Psalm 110, verse number 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So the Lord is the Lord of David. You can imagine an exalted king of Israel who is like a superpower. Now he stands up from his throne and he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Which other Lord can be greater than you? You are the exalted king of the whole nation of Israel. And you are acknowledging another Lord who is speaking to another Lord. The Lord said to my Lord. So David was unveiling that there is a Lord above him. And he was prophesying the revelation of Jesus. Sit at my right hand. Now, when he says sit at my right hand, he's talking about Jesus in his exalted position. You will find that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. Read it at home. You'll find it in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Where he says he is seated in the heavenlies above, far above. Sit at my right hand. Jesus is seated at the right hand of majesty. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Talking about Jesus. So Jesus was the one David was talking about in the book of Psalms. Wherever you see Christ seated at the right hand of God, anywhere you find that reference in the Bible, they are making reference to Psalm 110 verse 1. Psalm 110 verse 1. Look at Psalm 110 verse 4 and 5. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Next verse. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. Now, it's repeated in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 5 to 7. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 20. Talking about Jesus' high priest. And Hebrews chapter 7, the whole chapter. Hebrews chapter 7, 
the whole chapter. Jesus has been made a high priest. Today, all the priests in the Old Testament were a figurative expression of Jesus, the high priest. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 8, Jesus is the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24, Jesus is the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30, Jesus is the wisdom of God. Jesus is the wisdom of God that Solomon was talking about in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18, Jesus is the part that shined brighter and brighter. Jesus is that part that shined brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. The part of the righteous is as a shining light. Jesus is that path that shines brighter and brighter till the perfect day. That's why 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 19 will call Jesus the day star. The day star arise in your hearts. He is the day star that arises in our hearts. In Proverbs chapter 16 verse 15, Jesus is the shorty or the guarantee for the sinner. Jesus is the shorty or the guarantee for the sinner. In the light of the king's countenance is life. Jesus is that life. You will find it in Romans chapter 5 verse 8 to 10. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11. Then in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. Jesus is that strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and is safe. Jesus is that strong tower. So when Solomon was talking about the name of the Lord being a strong tower, he was actually speaking of Jesus in his Proverbs as a strong tower that we run into. If you believe in the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. It's a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and they are saved. In Proverbs chapter 7 verse 17, he is a friend. He is a friend all right, of all time and eternity. He is a friend of all time and eternity. Talking about the perfume, the man, the aloes, and the cinnamon. All those were used figuratively to speak about the fragrance that flows out of Christ. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8 calls him the one amongst a thousand. The one amongst a thousand. In Song of Solomon, he is a shepherd. He is that shepherd. Jesus is that shepherd that Jesus spoke about in Matthew 25, the shepherd of the sheep. The book of Isaiah is a very full package, a book that brings a lot of revelation about the sufferings of Christ, particularly Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who had believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Next verse. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Next verse. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteem him not. Next verse. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted next verse but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his tribes we were healed isaiah took time to open up the riches of redemption and what isaiah spoke in isaiah 53 is repeated in matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17 matthew 8 16 and 17 repeated in first peter chapter 2 verse 24 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 24. Repeated in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus becomes the sin bearer for humanity. In Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 11, 1 to 3. And there shall comfort a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. 
and shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. All right, Jesus quoted that scripture in Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He also quoted that scripture in Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Glory to God. In Isaiah 12 verse 3, he is the well of salvation. With joy we draw water from the wells of salvation. Jesus is the well of salvation. That's why I say the water that I give you, when you drink of it, you never thirst again. Isaiah 32 verse 1 and 2, he is the king that reigns in righteousness. All of these are revelations of Jesus. Remember Jesus' Bible study, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded. Okay? These are the words I spoke to you, which were written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms concerning me. Glory to God. Isaiah is so full and filled with Jesus. He talks about, I will do a new thing. He's talking about Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. Then the book of Jeremiah 23, verse 5 and 6. Behold, the days come, save the Lord, that I will raise up unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called, the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah Sid Kenu. So when you hear El Shaddai, Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Gomola. When you hear all of those Jehovah's, all those names speaks of Jesus. All those names speaks of Jesus. God has no name. God was only given a name in Jesus. God was given a name in Jesus to identify his love and his compassion towards humanity. God has no name. He was only given a name in Jesus to identify his love and his compassion towards humanity. So when you hear El Shaddai, Sid Keno, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Nisi, all those are referring to Jesus. In Jeremiah 33 verse 15 to 16, In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith he shall be called. The Lord, our righteousness. Ezekiel 34, 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Then Jesus now confirms that by saying, I am the true shepherd in John chapter 10. So Ezekiel was referring to Jesus. Hebrews 13, 20 Jesus is called the chief shepherd of the sheep. So Jesus is that great shepherd. Ezekiel 48, 35. It was round about 18,000 measures. And the name of that city from that day shall be. The Lord is there. <laughs> Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20. Lo. I am with you always. The Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. Lo, I am with you always till the end of the earth. Amen. In the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 2 verse 34. He is a stone that was rejected and he became the head of the corner. Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 to 16. He is called the son of man. The son of man, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Daniel chapter 9 verse 24, he is Messiah. Daniel 9 24, he is Messiah. In Hosea chapter 3 verse 5, Hosea 3 verse 5. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord 
and his goodness in the latter days. In Hosea chapter 11 verse 1, he is the son out of Egypt. The son out of Egypt. When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. You see that spoken of Jesus in Matthew 2 15 where Mary and Joseph took him to Egypt until Herod died and at the death of Herod he was brought out out of Egypt. Okay. In the book of Joel he is a spirit. In the book of Joel or what we call Joel. In the book of Joel he is a spirit. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. He is the spirit. First Peter chapter 1 verse 10 says that the spirit of Christ was in them. The spirit of Christ was in them testifying of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should come. Alright? So the spirit of Christ. Alright? Now, in Joel chapter 3 verse 17 he is God's dwelling in Zion. Jesus is God's dwelling in Zion. So shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion. He is the Lord dwelling in Zion. In Amos chapter 9 verse 11 to 12. Amos chapter 9 verse 11 to 12. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is falling and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the hidden which are called by my name. Sayeth the Lord that doeth this. That was quoted in Acts chapter 15 verse 16. The restoration of the tabernacle of David. When Cornelius got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. It was a promise of the Jews and the Gentiles in salvation. Obadiah, just one chapter, verse 17. He is the deliverer in Zion. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Or the way it is actually supposed to read is that the delivered ones shall assemble in Zion. Deliverance does not happen in Zion. Deliverance happens outside Zion. But when deliverance has happened, those that are delivered are assembled in Zion. The word peleta. They are assembled in Zion. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 20 to 24. You are come to Mount Zion. You are come to the heavenly Jerusalem. You are come to the innumerable company of angels. You are come to the spirits of just men made perfect. You are come to Jesus. You are come to the blood of sprinkling. That speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. You are come to that Zion. Hallelujah. In Jonah chapter 2 verse 9, he is the salvation of Jonah. Jonah chapter 2 verse number 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. He is the salvation of Jonah. You and I know that Jonah was not in hell because Jonah said I was in hell. Give me the next verse. And the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet has that brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Next verse. When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. Verse 8 now. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. So we know that Jonah was in the belly of a fish, but Jonah said, I was in the belly of hell. Which means that the story of Jonah in the belly of the fish was a figurative communication of Jesus in the grave three days and three nights. Jesus said it in Matthew 12, 39. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Next verse. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Alright, so Jonah was a figure of Jesus. 
Micah chapter 5 verse 2. But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. He's talking about the pre-existent nature of Jesus. The pre-existent nature. That is Jesus' pre-existent creation. That's what he's talking about in Micah. Okay? In Nahum, 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 chapter 1, verse 7, speaking of Jesus. Nahum 1, 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust him. Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. Next verse. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Next verse. Behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now, if you observe, it was quoted in Romans 1.17. That verse was quoted in Romans 1.17. Quoted in Galatians 3.11. And quoted in Hebrews 10.38-39. to His faith was not used in the New Testament. Because he was referring to the faith of Christ. So he didn't call it his faith. Alright. The just shall live by faith. Not by his. By faith. The his there is the faith of Jesus Christ. The just shall live by the faith of Christ. The vision is for an appointed time. But you know in the book of Hebrews 10. He said he that will come will come. And will not tarry. So when he says the vision is for an appointed time. It shall surely come. He was talking about he that will come. So the vision is the coming of Jesus. It's not the vision of your business. It's the vision <laughs> of the coming <laughs> of Jesus. Okay. He that will come will come and will not tarry. Okay, it's talking about Jesus. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet... I will rejoice. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Talking about Jesus. Zephaniah 3.17 The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Talking about who? Jesus. Haggai. Haggai. Or Haggai. Haggai. Chapter 2 verse 7. Woo! Haggai 2 7. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. Jesus is the desire of all nations. Jesus is the desire of all nations. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. Zechariah chapter 13, verse number 7. He is the shepherd that was smitten, and the sheep scattered. Away called sword against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, said the Lord of hosts, smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. You will see that also mentioned by Jesus in Matthew 26, 31. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. Remember, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all these things shall be fulfilled, which were written where? In the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. If it's getting clear, can I have a powerful amen? amen. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 8. Zechariah, he calls Jesus the servant branch in Zechariah 3 8. Then Zechariah 6 12. He calls Jesus the man whose name is the branch. All speaking about Jesus. The man whose name is the branch. Malachi. Almighty Malachi. Mega Malachi. <laughs> Malachi 3.1 Behold, I will send my messenger and shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, save the Lord of hosts. Talking about John the Baptist, the messenger that went ahead to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. But look at verse 3 now. Malachi 3.3 3. 
and he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Talking about Jesus, he's the one that will purge, he's the one that will cleanse. Malachi 4.2, Malachi chapter 4 verse number 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. Still talking about John the Baptist 4 5. Behold I will send you Elijah the prophet. Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So that Elijah that was to be sent was John the Baptist. Who came to prepare the way of the Lord. There's no other Elijah coming from anywhere. So we can see that all through the scriptures. There was a meeting. Or a mentioning. Or a connection in the sufferings of Christ and the glory that will follow. All the scriptures we read reveals that Christ will suffer or reveals that glory will follow. The dominion, the authority will come afterward. And this is how the Bible was interpreted to us. And that is what we have as the epistles. So the epistles are not a magical book. They are the rightly divided scriptures. The things were interpreted from the entire Genesis to Malachi, given to us so we can consume in the epistles. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So we see Jesus transcend human history in all the events and in all the types and in all the shadows. We call them types and shadows today because we have the benefit of hinds feet. In Bible days, they didn't call them types and shadows. In those days, they saw it as the dealings of God among his people. But today we call it types and shadows. But now with benefit of revelation, we see types and shadows in prophecy. Not everything in prophecy, okay, because there was prophecy. There were types and shadows. Okay, so you, you need to know where is prophecy. You need to know where is types and shadows from Genesis to Malachi. You see, Jesus spoke often through the scriptures. And all we just did today was to select a few to show you how Bible study is done. You locate Christ from the Old Testament and you see a corroboration of that in the New Testament. That combination is how we teach and study the scriptures can somebody shout hallelujah now let's look at the earth for instance are you ready for this i want to drop something now hey 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 are you ready for this can somebody give me a living amen, amen. if you really want more let me have a better amen, amen. second peter chapter 3 verse 5 second peter was still explaining and understanding christianity for these they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. The heavens were of old. This was before Noah's flood. This was before the flood of Noah. Which means there was a world before Noah. There was a world before Noah. And there was a world after Noah. And the world after Noah is the world we are in now. But there was a world before Noah. The world that came after Noah, after the flood, is the world that we are in now. Now, that world is what Peter is talking about. The world before Noah was created by the word of God. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 12 now. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Wow. He says to us, heaven, and when he's talking of a heaven there, he is talking about the atmospheric heavens. The atmospheric heavens. The taller heavens. 
what we call outer space. Okay? What we call the galaxies, Mars, Jupiter. We're talking about all those worlds, the galaxy worlds, the outer space. So Peter is saying, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Give me verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So you see why heaven is not up. You see why heaven is not in the sky. Because everything up shall be dissolved. So what we look for is a new heaven. We look for a new heaven. And a new earth. Let's see the difference between the new heaven and the new earth and this heaven and this earth that we have now. Are you ready for this? Let's see the difference. Please stay with me. This is very important. Number one, in the first heaven, in the first earth, there was night. There was night, N-I-G-H-T. There was night. Just like right now, there is night. We have day and night. Abi? Hello? Huh? We have day and night. Revelation 22 verse 5. And there shall be no night there. They need no candle. Neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. There is no night there. There is no night there. Hallelujah, there is no night there. For Jesus is the light in the heavenly city bright. Hallelujah, there is no night there. This heaven shall be dissolved with fire. We look for a new heaven where there is no night. In this one, there is night. I'm teaching good. In the new heaven, there shall be no candle, no generator, no diesel, no nepa, no solar. Jesus will be the light. He is the light of the city. Kabayada. The light that we need will be coming out of Jesus. And because we shall be with him, there will be no darkness. Number two, there shall be no sea. In the new heaven and earth, there shall be no sea. In Genesis 1.10, we have sea. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 10, there is sea. Revelation 21 verse 1. Put it up. Revelation chapter 21 verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. There was no more sea. So, in the new heaven and earth, you will not travel overseas. Because there will be no more sea. Number three. There shall not be moon. There will be no moon in the new heaven and new earth. But in this present heaven and earth, Genesis 1, 16 and 17, there was moon. Moon, lesser light. Sun, greater light. In the new heaven and new earth, there shall be no moon. Revelation 21, 23. Put it up for me. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. None of this, this heaven, this heaven, all of this heaven and this earth, everything will be dissolved. Because the heaven we are going to, this body cannot go there. That's why people die. Death is in order for this suit to be changed. You can't go to heaven with an earth suit. 
you need a heavenly suit that is compliant with that environment because the things in that environment are not the things in this environment even when you want to go into outer space they prepare you for a period of time and you wear a space suit because you can't go to outer space and be moving like this the atmosphere there in the sky is not compliant to the atmosphere here so you must be prepared and you must be dressed to get into outer space if outer space just here you need to wear a space suit is it the heaven of the heavens where jesus resides no you will have to drop mortality and put on immortality now when you wear immortality in that realm there is no time in that realm there is no distance and in that realm there is no matter i don't know if you understand what i'm talking about that's why a man that doesn't have the life of god cannot go there you can't trek there and you cannot go there climbing ladder 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 La, da, la, da, la, da, la, da. there shall be no tears there no tears no sorrow no crying and that one is very important here there is crying here there is sorrow here there are tears revelation chapter 21 verse number four and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more death. No more pain. No more weeping. Malaria, far, far, far. Even on earth now, there are countries where there's no malaria. Even on earth, we were in Kenya now. They don't know malaria in Kenya. So it's not everywhere there is malaria. Malaria is a small fry. It's a small fry. There'll be no pain. No disease. No sickness. No pain. No sorrow. You don't wake up one morning feeling blue. And another morning feeling happy. No mood swings. It will be joy, 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 joy unending. That's why we now have Holy Ghost joy. Holy Ghost joy. <laughs> Holy Ghost joy. Joy in the Holy Ghost. See, when we are having joy in the Holy Ghost, is warm up classes. Warm up classes for the other one. Somebody shout joy. Somebody shout joy. <laughs> Somebody shout joy, joy, joy. There shall be no, no sorrow, only joy. That's why Jesus said, rejoice not that demons obey you, but rather. Because in heaven, our joy will not be tied to car and house. There will be no car and house there. Our joy will be the fact that we're together with Jesus. It is joy that passes to understanding. It means this joy cannot be explained. Because when you look around, there's nothing around that made you rejoice. But you're rejoicing. It's a force in the spirit. There'll be joy. There shall be no more curse. You know curse? Cause. <laughs> there, shall, there shall be no more curse. You know why I'm saying curse, right? <laughs> Genesis 3.17, there was a curse on the earth, or a curse on the earth. Genesis 3.17. But Revelation 22 verse 3, put it up for me. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. The reason why there shall be no more, there shall be no more, is because of the presence of Christ. He shall be the light. He shall be the glory thereof. And because the lamb is in them, there shall be no more curse. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 22 to 24, the tree of life was taken away. In Eden, the tree of life was taken away. In Revelation 22 verse 2, 
in the midst of the street of it and on the either side of the river was there the tree of life which bore 12 manner of fruit and yielded a fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations you know there'll be no more darkness there'll be no more pain there'll be no more cause the tree of life is restored so in christ we have a full redemption full redemption of man and of everything that was created we have the complete and the total redemption in christ jesus so jesus is actually redeeming his own heaven and redeeming his own earth jesus is redeeming his own heaven and redeeming his own earth acts chapter 3 verse 21 talking about jesus whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which god has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began restitution of all things somebody say all things yeah restitution of all things ephesians chapter 1 verse 9 to 10 having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had proposed in himself oh that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him look at revelation chapter 1 verse 8 i am alpha and omega the beginning and the ending the beginning and the ending say of the lord which is which was which is to come the almighty huh. which is which was which was to come the almighty i'm the alpha and omega usually these are letters in the greek okay i will have said i'm the a to z but if i was to say it i will say i am the beginning and the ending it refers to a story i'm the beginning of the story and the ending of the story like when you are telling a story you say this is the beginning and this is the ending it's like when you are telling a story from the beginning of the story to the end of the story Christ is the light throughout the story. He is what you look out for from the beginning to the end. Now look at what he says. Which is, which was, and which is to come. So we have the revelation of Jesus who was a lamb. He was a tree of life. He was a voice. He was the rock. He was the serpent. On the pole. Which is seated today at the right hand of the father far above all principalities powers dominion might which is to come he is to come in a new heaven and a new earth which is to come now we have looked at which was have we from Genesis, Exodus to Malachi. Which was. We will look at which is. Then we will look at which is to come. After he rose from the dead. Now Revelation chapter 1. You know most of the time when we read the book of Revelation. We are always looking out for Antichrist. 666. 666. But you see the book of Revelation is the, it's not the book of Antichrist. Look at Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So what is the book of Revelation about? Jesus Christ. So when you read the book of Revelation, who do you look for? Jesus Christ. Don't look for beasts. Don't look for, for horns. Don't look for pillars. Look for Jesus Christ. So this book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's prophetic in nature, but it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Of his events and the things that will happen shortly so we see the end of satan in the book of Re actually the book of revelation shows us the termination the end of satan look at revelation chapter 22 verse 13 i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last the first and the last that's the end of the book then look at verse 20 to 21 he which testified this thing saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. 
Even so, come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That word amen is the name of Jesus. Amen means fulfilled. So Jesus is the fulfillment of the scriptures. He is the amen of God. Jesus is the amen of God. So we see that he was. He is and he is to come. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Can we all read together? Everybody want to go. Jesus Christ. And. And. Did you just hear yourself? What did you say again? Are you sure of what you're saying? Look well. Are you sure of what you're saying? Okay. I want you to really like you're sure of what you're saying. And if you're not sure of what you're saying, then find what you want to be sure about. Let's go again. One to go. Which was, which is, which is to come. Somebody says, where in the Bible did they say Jesus is God? The same? The only person that has that attribute is God. Which was, which is, which is to come. The Alpha, Omega, the beginning. So for you to be at the beginning means you predated the beginning. That means you began the beginning. It means you didn't begin with the beginning because you couldn't have begun with the beginning to be in charge of the beginning. He's the pre-existing one. It means he predated creation. He predated creation. It means he is the reason for creation. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So he pre-existed before Genesis 1. So before Genesis 1 was God. And in the beginning, God created. If I was writing Genesis for Moses, that's how I've written it. Before Genesis was God. And in the beginning, God created. Because he must have been before to be the one creating. He has no beginning. And this God that has no beginning, he say he is Jesus. He is Jesus the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And he says he is the almighty. You didn't see that? Where did, you, where did Jesus say, I am God? Are you hearing yourself? <laughs> Revelation 1 8. The beginning, the end, the alpha, the omega, the almighty. What did Isaiah say his name shall be called? Wonderful, counselor, mighty God. Eh? Mighty what? Mighty what? He is what? Who is mighty God? The everlasting. Who is the father? The prince of, who is the prince of peace? So Jesus is God Almighty. There's no God outside Jesus. He's a self-existing one. He predated time. He's the reason for time. And he will live beyond time. Time began and ended in him. He was light, he is light, he will be light forevermore. He was life, he is life, he will be life forevermore. So when we are come to the gospel, and you see somewhere like, I am Jehovah. Exodus 6, 3, I am Jehovah. That's why he is God. I am Jehovah. A name is a title of identity, okay? 
God is before all things exist. So when you see those names, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah El, El Elyon, Jehovah Shekinah, it's all figurative expressions of Jesus. Colossians 2, 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead how? Bodily. Give me the amplified of that. For in him the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. Message translation. Everything of God gets expressed in him. So you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. Kabayada. Kabayada. I say Kabayada. Stand up, let's close. Kabayada. Kabayada. I say Kabayada. Kabayada. Jakwa Mianga. Elotova. Vobunda Kataya. Ila Badagada. Leave that thing, leave that thing. Lego Rotosakaya. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am my father. Our the beginning, the end, the alpha, the omega, the almighty. We're talking about Jesus. The scriptures testify. It is this kind of Bible study that Jesus did. Then when he now arrived, their understanding just opened. Pam! Ah! Because before that Bible study, all they were seeing is David and Goliath. <laughs> Delilah and Samuel. All they were seeing is katakata everywhere. War and rumors of war. Israel defeating their enemies. Israel defeating their enemies. That's all they were seeing. Then when Jesus finished the Bible study, they went like, wow. So what were we reading? The things concerning. That is the high point of Bible study. To see Christ in the pages of the Holy Scriptures. Because when you see him there, in him, you see you. And once you see you, you are free from identity crisis. You now know who you are. You now know what you have. You now know what Christ can do through you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lift your right hands and let's give him thanks today. Just thank him for being your savior. Thank him for loving you. Thank him for being your Messiah. Thank him for being the reason for which you are saved and washed by his blood. Lego shakala namasa. Mambronga dagaladaya. Egebo jekele ne mambra gada sokele de baya. Bobaro godo zobre gede sekele ne mos. Ego do golo do bo jakala. Mambra gada sokele de baya. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, we rejoice that we have this another opportunity to come before your holy, precious, written word today. Thank you for the privilege to learn, to study, to grow, to be established in the truth that is in the gospel. To come to a place of clarity, to come to a place where we are stable, to come to a place of growth and a place of nourishment. A place where we are fortified in our understanding of Christ. And I decree that today, whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Sickness and disease terminated. Your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. So we rejoice that the army of Jesus is rising all over the nations of the earth. Men and women of revelation that will walk in the light, the glorious light of the gospel, where there is no stumbling. Father, we give you praise. That throughout the course of this period, as we walk in the consciousness of the things we are learning, we experience victory in every area of life. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the blessing. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen on a note of finality. Can we celebrate God's word with a shout? Glory! Amen! Praise God. All right, I want to take up your honor offerings. We want to honor the teaching of God's word. Online and TV, the banking details are scrolling. 
grab your offerings. The details are coming on the screen, but everybody has the opportunity to give today, and together we honor the word of God. Lift up your offerings, Father. We give in faith, we give with joy. Thank you for the privilege of honoring and worshiping you with our offerings. And we decree that our offerings rise before you a sweet smell, an offering acceptable. And we declare right now, by faith in your word, that as we give today, through our givings, the gospel continues to thrive in the nations of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. And every believer says a powerful amen. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.